I would argue that potentially the AI could be more creative than the human because we, you know, we only have the capacity to store so much in our head at any one time and memories get kind of faded and things like that. But if you imagine AI has, has learned on a vast amounts, which it can go and grab and refer to and connect at any time and much quicker than we can, potentially AI could be creative in ways that we as humans couldn't even fathom, that we've never seen before. So maybe it is a, a different type of creativity. Resistance is futile. Welcome to the podcast, where we explore what's happening with AI, business, automation, and culture, and ask, where on earth is all this going? We're here to talk about AI and creativity. Can machines be truly yeah. creative? Now, this last week, there's been a couple of things going on. There was the Kate Middleton episode with a photo that may or yes. may not have been doctored by AI. And yeah. then there was Guy Chambers, who has collaborated with Robbie Williams over more than two decades, said in an article in The yeah. Guardian over the weekend, I think we may get to a stage in the future where an album will need to have a badge saying this is an all human record. From what I've seen of AI, and this is him still quoted, the acceleration is pretty terrifying in terms of what it can do and how it could replace songwriters. So far, so mm -hmm. Grundian and miserable. <laughs> We're all doomed yes. as usual. Yeah, yeah. By yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> by now, you're probably thinking this is another one of those episodes where Dave and Jamie worry themselves silly. But I'm going to go out early <laughs> and declare yeah. this is an R2D2 or maybe even a kit oh. from Knight Rider. Whoa, hold on, <laughs> editor Dave here. If you've not listened to us before, you won't know that we have a scale for how to think of AI in each area that we cover. Because it's too simplistic and unhelpful to just say it's good or it's bad, we break it down into 10 easy to remember points on a scale from Skynet, really, really, really bad, to Kit from Knight Rider. And of course, lots of others in between. Here they are, 10, Skynet, dystopian and inescapable. Nine, The Matrix, dystopian, but possibly escapable. Number eight, Hell from 2001. Murderous, but isolated. Can be unplugged too. Seven, Robocop. There's just one, and it might possibly be good, maybe. Number six, Wally. -E. Kind of nice, but useless. Five, C-3PO. Useful, but annoying. Four, Johnny number five from Short Circuit. Helpful, kind of funny, heart of gold. Can't do much. Three, Data from Star Trek. Really smart, benign, but a bit too nice. Gives vanilla answers. Probably chat GPT in 250 years. Two, R2D2. Incredibly loyal, smart, difficult to understand though. And of course, struggles with stares. And at number one, Kit from Knight Rider. Loyal, can understand what he says. Looks cool, good in a scrape. I mean, this is what we want AI to be. Got that? Okay. Let's get back to it. I'm doing okay, it. Okay, okay. I'm it. going there. Yeah, I mean, that is that is, that now, is I'm a not bold gonna, statement. I am not going to minimize concerns about artists losing their livelihoods, but this episode isn't so much about the economics of the creative industry as it is about the core idea of creativity and where it comes from. So, yes, Jamie, for some context, I've studied art history, and if you know what happened after realism was automated by photography, you'll know that we experienced an explosion in new art forms. So basically, uh -huh. photography pushed painters to move beyond representation. So it led to the emergence of groundbreaking uh, okay. movements like Impressionism, Cubism, right. and Surrealism. And there's a whole load of others, but those are the ones that people normally remember the most. And visual reality didn't need to be recorded by the brush any longer. So artists went beyond it into places that you know made us feel okay. new and more complex emotions. Yeah. Yes. Now yes. I think we're in a similar moment and after I've got your take and concerns Jamie I, I want to explore some some possibilities. First of all what from what I've just said there what was your first what's your first impression what first comes to mind and then I've got a couple of questions for you as a Resident AI expert. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like you. I'm quite positive about the creativity side of AI. From what I've seen, what I've played with, what I've been 
watching and and um, and observing, I I think it's it's another form of creativity. You know, it, it, I haven't studied art history. I would consider myself a creative person. I enjoy music. I enjoy doing a little bit of art and just messing around. And sometimes even running a business, I find could be creative. And not not the not the accounting side, obviously. To, you know, just a no, disclaimer neither. there. Well, no, there no. is something called creative accounting, but that's a different creative thing. Accounting. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so I I like the ability. Okay, I'll tell you what I like about it. I like the ability that if I think of myself, I have lots of good ideas, or I think they're good ideas about something creative, but because I don't necessarily have the skill to paint or draw um, or write complex music or do whatever it is. The AI enables me to get what's in my head kind of out there into onto paper or onto the screen. Um, and I think that's really good. That, that's very enabling and quite liberating, actually. So I, I guess like a lot of the, I, I guess like photography, you know, going back to what you're talking about, kind of realism, you know, before you had to be a fantastic painter who was able to really capture the, the, the realism of, a, of an image, of, of, a, of a scene or a person. But now everyone with their phones and cameras can snap away and recreate that image. How do we even define creativity? Because that's still us through the machinery, if you mm. like. So your question is, will AI ever be able to come up with that prompt itself to generate this image or video or whatever it is that it is, or music or whatever it's trying to do? And I guess, I think possibly it will get to a point where that's possible. We're, we're, we're probably already there to a certain extent. If, if you were to say to... Um, let use, let's use let's use uh, the OpenAI image generation as, as an example. A lot of people have used ChatGPT, so they're, they're familiar with it. Um, at, at the moment, I might say, "Oh, a you know a flower growing from a from a desert, you know, with a mountain behind it, and come up with this beautiful beautiful image." Well, what you could prompt is, "I want you to come up, ChatGPT, with ten random, totally kind of conflicting images as ideas for prompts to create images." So now it's using its its imagination to come up with that. Creativity can, you can very dryly explain creativity in terms of being able to make unusual connections between unconnected things to create new meaning. Yeah. Now, at, yeah. at its simplest, that's what creativity is and that's what artists do. Yeah. But saying that the, a, a machine doing that makes it creative isn't quite enough because... The inputs that have come that are, it's using are all human, and they're all the ability to have it mean give it any meaning at all relies on us as subjective experiences. You know, mm. we're we're not machines. We experience these things subjectively, and we're here experiencing it in real time, as it were. The only reason that it has any meaning is, of course, because of us. Now, <clears throat> I'm not saying we can just sit on the sofa and and let machines do all this stuff and it wouldn't work like that anyway but um but it's important to note that all of the inputs that it uses to be creative are human ones all of it even if it's historical it's it's still human but, but inputs it's our work but isn't that all that we have as humans is uh, okay it's our we have experienced through our senses other humans doing things being creative yes and, we, we, and they, yeah. They therefore become an, a, they become an extension of the creative process, but they're mm. also humans, right? So the, what I'm saying is AI is an extension of us. So it can't just mm -hmm. be, and, and, but you can't cut it off and say, right, stop, everything stops now. Now go and be creative and make something completely mm. new. Be the new Shakespeare. It can't. It, it must still have inputs from humans to make that new leap. Something I, I discovered in my research and I kind of kept on prompting the AI for, for mm. I wanted something creative. I want something positive, etc. Here's what I asked for it to do. I said, I want a creative global initiative that's super creative and positive. And at yeah. first it came up with something very happy clappy. You'll see what I mean. It said picture yeah. a global art initiative called unity canvas designed to promote global peace and cultural understanding. In this project, individuals from all around the world are invited to submit their artwork, poetry, or even short video clips expressing their Beautiful. personal visions of peace, unity, and cultural pride through a dedicated digital platform. So far, so kind of kumbaya. All right? Love and I was it. like, yeah. Eh. And then it went, it went on. The AI system developed with a sophisticated pattern recognition and thematic analysis capabilities reviews each submission to identify recurring motifs, 
color schemes, and sentiments. It then intelligently integrates these diverse pieces into a massive evolving digital tapestry that is displayed in real time on large public screens in major cities worldwide, as well as accessible online. As the project unfolds, Unity Canvas becomes a living mosaic of global creativity and shared humanity. Schools could participate by submitting their students' artwork, fostering a sense of global citizenship and cross-cultural appreciation among the younger generation. The AI would adapt the overall piece to incorporate new submissions, ensuring that the artwork remains dynamic and ever-evolving, reflecting the ongoing contributions of individuals from various cultures and backgrounds. Viewers could be encouraged to donate to specific causes or charities directly through the platform with the evolving art piece serving as a powerful visual representation of the world coming together to support shared values and goals. What do you think? I think that's beautiful. To me, it's beautiful. It starts off a bit kumbaya, doesn't it? But I think what it does is it, it's taken an idea that I've given it as a catalyst and it's kind of taken in all of the data that's sitting around about those sorts of ideas and it's gone, well, look, here's ambitiously what people probably would quite like. But it's a, ca- a great creative catalyst. That's what I'm really impressed with. It helps you visualize things that are on the edge of your perception that you can't quite articulate. It's very good yes. at giving you some ideas. Yeah, that, and. I mean, I'm I'm not sure I can say it on the podcast, but I tell you what immediately came to mind when when you were describing this. You know, they they they're giving the opportunity of school kids to to submit their art. You know, from all around the world, thousands, millions of school kids and cock and balls, <laughs> cock and balls. I see. I was being you nice. Thinking, there. I was being nice, saying <laughs> Willie, and you've come up. You're with cock thinking. And balls. All they're going to do is send in millions of cock and balls, and that's what's cock going to be all over cock and balls the world. All over the world, yeah. Well, it's still creative. That's that's yeah. humanity. <laughs> Matt, so, so thanks for bringing the tone down once again. You're uh, welcome. That was good because it was getting far too lofty and, uh, and yeah, nice. Yeah, isn't yeah, no, it? it needed to bring it down to our level. That's that's better. I feel better now. <laughs> All right. Well, on that lofty unnote, so basically, when you're what you're getting is a reflection of human creativity back to you through this this uh, portal, which is incredible. But that's all it is. Mm. It's a reflection. It's a very extensive and beautiful mirror, potentially, but also a potentially horrifying mirror, depending on what we input. Yeah, but okay. So I still think I have a slightly different opinion on this because I think that I think that's all that humans are. Right, we are just a ref- and what and the human creativity is a reflection of or a mirror of our experiences and everything that we've seen and experienced throughout our life. And AI is therefore doing the same thing. I, I would argue that potentially the AI could be more creative than a human because we, are, you know, we only have the capacity to store so much in our head at any one time, and memories get kind of faded and things like that. But if you imagine AI has the that has has learned on a vast amount, which it can go and grab and refer to and connect at any time, you know, at any time and much quicker than we can, potentially AI can create, can cr- be creative in ways that we as humans couldn't even fathom. So, so for, I'm just kind of thinking about music because I like music. So, you know, music, we tend to stick to, you know, at standard time signatures or keys, whether we, which songs are written in things like that. Uh, AI potentially could come up with something totally like in a totally different key that we didn't really think we could use or a totally different time signature that we've never really thought about using before. And we might think it sounds like garbage because it just doesn't really kind of resonate with us. But you could argue that that sometimes you look at modern art and think, my God, really? Is that art? But it's because someone is doing something totally, totally that we've never seen before. So totally new. Potentially, yeah, totally new. And, and I think AI has the, has the potential to do that. I was listening to a podcast recently and they were talking about, you know, the ability for AI to discover new materials, you know, potentially better materials for us to use, better, better drugs and medicine that, that we can't even fathom or it, would, or it would take, you know, millennia for us to discover these things just because of the time it takes to, to connect these dots together. So, so maybe it is a, a different type of creativity. No, I think I think it's still not different from having a situation in which humans input what they need or start a process and then the 
we're we're asking for an algorithm and uh, an AI, let's say, to to help us finish it. But we're still the yeah. we're still the input. It's not even human beings, and this is a really important point, actually. Even human beings don't start, of course, from a vacuum. We're creative based on a lot of inputs that we yeah. get from nature. You know, yeah, so, so of course we're part of the same continuum. I guess so. What I'm saying is, I, I'm not, and I'm definitely not trying to belittle the achievements of what AI does. This is the quite the opposite. But I'm trying to contextualize and say it's also part of the continuum. Can, but can it be creative on its own? No, only if it's connected mm. to human inputs and human experience. Then it has meaning. But on its own, it's not going to go off and you know, colonize a planet by itself or, and, and then create an entire society that has any meaning. I just, I don't see that. I do see that in science fiction novels. I don't see that with what we're developing. I think that's anthropomorphizing the technology, which doesn't exist in a yeah. vacuum. Yes. Is, is kind of what I mean. So, so okay, uh, what I'm saying, I and I think it's much more empowering if we think of AI as ours, as us, as an extension of us, mm -hmm. because then we take yes. more responsibility for it too. So I think, even if it was possible for it to do that, which I don't think it ever will be, it's much wiser for us to to build the story that it is connected to us because that's how it feels. Uh, and yeah, in yeah. every application I've used it, I've felt much more empowered as I've got to use it better. And I've felt that it yes. it's a catalyst. It helps me with my own ideas as a catalyst, which is much the low, the, the stakes are so low as a, as a creator to be honest, using AI, I'm not trying to do brain surgery or something like that. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't work. I can fail multiple times. And in doing that, I find that AI tools are amazing. So, so, yes. but I don't ever feel like they're independent of me. They'll do nothing. They'll just sit there just being dumb and doing nothing without my inputs. I think the way to then flesh out these ideas that we've talked about is to look at some practical real world examples of how they might unfold right so what i did was i built some scenarios that i want to i want to cover with you and then i whittled it down to the three most likely given today's level of ai yep and what i came up with uh, with the help of chat gpt was following three and these are the what it thought was the most likely to be realized based on, on that idea of current trajectories, et cetera. So first one is AI-assisted movie making. So okay. this is an extension of current trends where AI is already being used to generate special effects, assistant editing, and even script writing. By 2035, AI's role in the film industry could become more prominent, aiding in creative, creating more sophisticated virtual actors and dynamic environments. Wow. Right, that's already yep. happening. These advancements would not only enhance the visual experience, but also reduce production costs and time, making this application of AI both practical and economically appealing. You can, of course, see at first glance that, oh, that'll just strip away loads of jobs. What it'll do is it'll create an enormous number of very small niche audiences that might pay good money yes. for something that's really unique to them. And so yeah. compare, compare the mid-80s or even later than that, actually, to now with Netflix and other streaming yes. services, obviously, just how much content is created. Yeah, yeah, it's now multiply created. that by a thousand or more, a million. That's what I think you're going to get, is you're going to get a lot more uh, small creators able to make experiences filmically that are astonishing, but they may have small audiences that pay. They might have small audience, I say yes. small, they might have an audience of only a few hundred thousand, and yet they're yes. paying for that, and that's more than enough to make that again because the cost is so low. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I see as an explosion of creativity. So how about this next one? Personalized music albums. So with streaming yeah. services that's and AI cool. already beginning to offer personalized playlists, the next natural step yep. is for AI to compose entirely new music tailored to individual listeners. By analyzing a user's yep. uh, listening history, emotional responses, and even physiological data, AI could wow, create music that's yes. uniquely suited to each person's taste and current mood, offering a deeply personal and engaging listening experience. And that may at first sound like just the AI doing all of that, but again, go back to our previous conversation. I don't see that happening without human inputs and 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 guidance. What do you think on that one? Because yes. that one's much more your area because there's a lot of yeah, psychology in that, I, I think. I, 
yeah, I think it's, it's, I think that's really interesting. You probably saw from my reaction. That seems like a really interesting, particularly when it, the idea of tying in the kind of physiological stuff, because I was listening yeah, right. to something recently. I, I, don't, I don't have a, a, an Apple watch or anything like that, but you can see that as more and more people get these things and the amount of data that it's recording. So let's say I listen to, uh, so funnily enough, I was, I've been going through the Elton John back catalog recently. Uh, always liked Elton <laughs> okay. John. And I thought I'd, uh, I thought I would, uh, I'd listen to the, the you know, dead and you go, comes out. Yeah. 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 And I've been, I've been blown away. I have been, I, I've always been a, a kind of a fan of his, but to really listen to some of the old stuff was fantastic. And particularly the kind of the, um, orchestral, um, uh, stuck on the on in the background of some of his earlier albums, and yep. it it has a very very emotional kind of you know hook. It really grabs you. Certain songs really grab you the way that the music works and the the, the, the keys and all and everything. So, you know, if I was wearing an Apple Watch and I was recording my physiological reaction to it, it would have spikes when I'd heard certain bits in certain songs. So, what you're saying or what AI is suggesting, ChatGPT is suggesting, is potentially I could now get a curated playlist. So yeah, I think that's. I, then, then I guess you get into this kind of deeper <laughs> question of what what is it, what is it that I'm enjoying about listening to music, or that we enjoy about listening to music? What is you know, is it just some notes that kind of tickle a certain you know kind of uh, a nerve in my brain that, that that makes me feel a certain way? Our experiences are subjective, mm. so we get to situations like not questioning if we're wet when we jump in the water. We're wet. We know what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to explain yeah. it. So I don't think that's a problem so much. Or well, certainly it's an interesting philosophical problem, but not for most people to, to worry about. But I think the experience of having music made for you probably will be an extension of the problem that you have today. If you play, for instance, your same playlists endlessly, it finds yeah. your, your algorithm will find the songs that you like and keep hammering them until yeah. you're sick of them. Going back to the roughage in your diet, you know, with Adele released uh, her, her first song in a while, it was probably about a year or two ago, right? And it was just her on piano singing. And okay. he, he analyzed the song and he says, you know, listen to her voice break on it. You know, it's kind of, she has this particular break in her voice and the piano is, is not quite on time. You know, it's a human playing the piano and a human singing that. There's no auto tune. There's no nothing like that. And, and the reason he said that, that song was so popular was because it's, it does something different. And, and if you go back and look at music and you look at what makes stuff so great and why we still listen to bloody Elton John and Queen and all this stuff is because the music doesn't follow the standard rules to a certain extent. It's, it's doing something, yeah, yeah. it's doing what your ear is not expecting. So my worry is that if you have algorithms and you already see this, you know, you, you, you kind of get into the echo chamber Well, the music itself becomes the kind of echo chamber. So. I like this. Episode. Yeah, I know what you so mean. Now I'm just going to, yeah, to see, what, see what I'm getting I remember at. the first time hearing Johnny Marr. I don't, I was never a, a super massive Smiths fan in the 80s, but oh, I knew I was, it was innovative. I was. And um, yeah. I, I mean, I went through a phase of liking it for a short time, but I also recognized just how innovative it was. And it was Johnny Marr's mm. guitar was always yeah. had that slip in it. You know, it yeah. had, and I don't know much about music, but it, that always just sounded so utterly unique in signature. And yeah. uh, I reckon it was a happy accident at first, and then he just kept it. And um, yeah. it's that sort of thing. I know what you mean, where there's just a an ability for music to feel suddenly like you're there in the room with you, uh, understanding yeah. you. And, and so that's what I, that's what I worry people will mistake AI being able to do in that it's someone human is trying to reach out to you and, uh, and remind you that you're also human. That won't happen. Um, if we, if we think that machines will just make a version of a new version of Elton John forever, for example. Yeah. But so I, yeah. I just, that's why I don't think we'll tolerate it. It's not a question of whether or not it's economically viable, et cetera, et cetera. Music doesn't care in the end. Uh, creativity doesn't know. care. It'll get it'll get made, and it'll get it'll something new will come out of it. Just simply because people can't stand it, they'll make something new, and it'll be popular. Yeah, and but, they'll use the but, tools. They'll use the tools to do it. Yeah, but I but the, this, I I think you know, like all these things, if I guess the music industry drives it, that which is which is financially motivated, and and what is what is popular is not necessarily what is good. 
And so again, you just need to kind of listen to the charts and listen to the music. It all literally sounds the same um, because that, you know, you're definitely showing it's, your it's, age. It's My kids all think that it's, it's quite unique. They, they do. And it's the same argument that I had, my parents had with me, it was it's okay. hilarious. It's it always right. repeats. So, so there's that, but look, they don't get to escape the economics of this either. And the economics are that everything gets so cheap for anyone to produce really quickly and easily that it keeps on getting disrupted. And I think those are, and this is a separate issue. And I don't think we'll need to talk about this soon, but the economics of AI is completely different and the big players don't get to win all the time or not easily. Uh -huh. Or if we're going to allow monopolies like big platforms, then which, by the way, go through these cycles of, of centralization and decentralization all the time. But even if we're going to allow that, then we're going to have to rewrite our idea of economics so that people benefit from the collective, you know, achievement that AI represents. Yeah. And I know we're not there yes. yet, but there's not enough people talking yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. But we're definitely going to cover that soon. Where do you rate this out of 10 on the scale on the skynet versus night rider scale oh i'm i'm with you i'm 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 very early i'm i'm at ones or twos because i think that yes there is going to be damage economically to people's jobs and things like that but i think that we are creative beings as human beings with that is part of our our dna and we will always find a way to use the tools that are available in ways that maybe we haven't even thought about to be creative so maybe it might mean the end of of certain industries or, or a change of certain industries but i can imagine entirely new types of industries and creativity kind of come out. and also i think another positive is that it may well lead to you know in the same way that that you know it's it stream, it streaming music for example has totally changed the way that artists make money most of them don't make any money unless you're a, you, you know you're a well-established very large artist so actually the way they make money now is by going on tour. Okay, they charge you a lot of money to see them on tour, but you get to live that human experience of seeing someone performing. And maybe that's, that will be what happens in some of these other creative elements as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I think it's positive. I think it's um, disruptive, but it was ever thus. I, and, and AI mm -hmm. just doesn't seem, this is not an area that's worth worrying about in my opinion. So uh, that's why I think we should leave it. Um, until, I'm sure other people will have next opinions. Week where we're replaced uh, by creatively yeah, created, yeah, AI created podcasters. I am working on it. We we are going to have an experiment with that um, and we'll find out. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's for another podcast. Um, but yeah, we would like to uh, get your comments and feedback. So if you think it's a... Uh, a Skynet, great, uh, but let us know why and how this would you know, end civilization to have uh, all the music mashed up in one place on a platform. But um, otherwise, what uh, what do you think and uh, and what do you want us to cover next time? But uh, yeah, good yeah. to chat to you as always, Jamie. As always, nice to see you. Resistance is 